we had already announced. I'll show you some of those today. So obviously, um, for the Barbarian, we want to flesh him out, and we knew that he, he needed a ranged attack. And so here's an example of Ancient Spear. Now, we don't want to turn the Barbarian into a ranged class, so this, some, this is something that feels very appropriate for him. We want to sell the themes that he's, you know, he's strong, he's tough, he's melee, so we have to come up with, you know, something that felt appropriate for that. Over for the Wizard, we're bringing back another fan favorite, you know, in the same way we brought back Multishot, bring back some Meteor. Meteor was also a really popular skill in D2. People liked it. We liked the gameplay of it. So we brought it back, artified it up, and I'll tell you right now, when you get some runes in Meteor, that's like just, you know, it's five times the fun. I'll also talk about the Witch Doctor. I mentioned earlier, I alluded, that we kind of want some movement options for every class. You know, uh, in the Spirit... Uh, Spirit Walk is the movement skill for the Witch Doctor. We wanted, again, something that stays thematically consistent for every class. In the Witch Doctor's case, he's about spirits and voodoo, so a Spirit Walk ability where he turns in corporal, he can walk around, he can walk through enemies, he can go around a corner, and then when Spirit Walk ends, he comes back and his physical form becomes teleported to wherever his spirit form is when the ability ends. It's pretty cool. And then finally, the new skill I'm going to show you today is the Monk. Uh, this particular skill is called Wave of Light. He summons a mystical bell that actually he shoots out as a range. It's kind of a combination of a melee and ranged attack. One of the things I really like about this skill is we need to differentiate the Barbarian from the Monk. They're both bar um, melee classes. In this case, the Monk, he's about you know, combining mystic arts with martial arts. And so we really, I like the, uh, the evocative imagery that happens here, just the, the concept of a mystical bell that he fires off, just is it's very vivid. All right, back to me. So I'm going to tell you about a new system that we've added into Diablo 3 in the last year. Uh, it's called Traits. So what are Traits? Well, essentially they're passive skills. Um, they are uh, ways that you can customize and modify and essentially kind of role play with your character and diversify your character builds. So you gain them as you level up. It's basically every other level. You don't get a point every level, but uh, I think it's every odd numbered level you get a, a trait point. Um, and really the goal of these is to alter your core attributes and aspects of your character. So if you have a barbarian and you want to be stronger, there's a trait for that. If you have a wizard and you want to uh, focus a lot more on elemental skills, you have a trait for that. So, and a lot of it is also to take the opportunity to add flavor to the game world. Um, so every trait has, in addition to just instructions on what it does, it has a little excerpt of some flavor text that tells you about the world, and it also is designed as a, as a skill to sell you something about your character and your class. So I'm going to give you some examples of that. So here's a trait example for the Barbarian called Inner Rage. So this highlights something really important about traits. They're not universal to all classes. Every class gets traits that are unique to them. There's some that carry over where it makes sense, but for the most part, they're uh, very unique to each class. So we want to sell the idea that the Barbarian not only is an angry dude, which you probably have figured that out already, um, but that he actually gets power through his rage. Um, and so we have a, you know, a cool name for it and also some text that kind of tells you about that. Uh, for the wizard, um, a lot of the traits take on more of a magical bent. We want to make sure that we sell the idea that even when the wizard's not casting you know, magic missiles and summoning up tornadoes, that there's just something inherently magic about her. So here we have a trait called Prismatic Cloak that essentially makes all of her armor spells more powerful. Uh, and it's the idea that she's just focused on this one ability such that the, she's amped them up. Um, and again, we put some nice you know, flavor text that basically sells the idea of if you choose to be this kind of wizard, this is who you are. That's something wrong with this thing. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think the clicker's broken. Yeah. So why did we decide to do this system? Well, there's a bunch of reasons. The main one's character customization, and those of you who um, know and love uh, the original Diablo and Diablo 2 know that character customization is a huge part of the game. And if you're new to Diablo, that's what it's all about. So um, that was a big focus for us. We used to have a system uh, in, the, in Diablo 2 
where you could spend attribute points on uh, all your core attributes. And this system was much loved as a customization tool, but in actuality, when we looked at it, it, most of the builds took the exact same points in the exact same areas, even across classes. And so we didn't really feel like it was a good customization system. So Trace was really specifically to address the removal of attribute point spending. So as I mentioned before, you want a strong barbarian, somebody who hits really hard, maybe he's really tough. There's traits for that. You can take legendary might, which increases your strength. You can take uh, iron skin, which gives you more uh, actual armor. Um, but let's say you want a berserker barbarian. You're, you care more about attack rate, hitting the enemy before they can hit you back. Well, there's traits for that that can increase your attack rate, can increase the power of your debuffs on enemies. So. More variety equals more builds. Um, every class now has roughly 30 traits, and those traits can you can spend between one to five points in them. Um, that adds up to uh, you know, roughly right now about 90 points per character. Um, and when you consider that you can only get about 29, 30 trait points, it's a lot of customization. So even if we, we you know, look at this and decide, well, you know, maybe this is too many traits, we'll just reduce the point spending in it because we want to keep the customization really high. So and one of the last reasons that we really wanted to do this is that there was always a bad decision to make in the previous skill trees where you knew that a passive skill like uh, this, if I take this, it gives me more armor. Well, that's a good skill, and mathematically it makes sense, but math kind of sucks. Like, this is, if Diablo is the active skill, then this guy's passive. Like, I want to spend points in Whirlwind. I don't want to spend points in more armor. So by separating the passive skills from the more active attack skills, which are now completely take up the skill system, uh, we get a much better decision point. Yes. Awesome. Glad, you're, glad you like it. So the last thing is, um, is making numbers awesome. So uh, how do you make math cool? Well, we tried to set it on fire and put skulls behind it, and, you know, that makes it pretty cool, but it, it wasn't really enough. So a lot of the design behind the trait system is if we're going to have you take a passive trait, I don't want it to be like, oh, if you take this trait, you get 0.1% more armor. 0.1% doesn't sound very awesome. So for us, it's like, no, it's, it's a big number. It's 25, 50, 100 percent more. Whatever number basically sounds cool when we get it. So we're really working on the system to make sure that these don't feel like weird numbers that you're not sure what to do. Diablo customization is very straightforward. The idea is very you know, simple to grasp, and that's important to us. So we don't consider the system done yet, so I love to share kind of our process with all of you. Um, our, what's on our to-do list? Well, the UI is not awesome, and it's okay for me to say that because I designed it. Um, so I'm not, I, you know, maybe my UI artist I can probably, but he did, he just does what I say. So um, it's just a grocery list right now, and it's not very fun to use. Um, gaining them every other level isn't. Perfect. It may be fine. We may ship with that, but right now it feels kind of like it feels a little weird. Like you, and you don't almost know when your trade points are going to show up, and that doesn't feel awesome. So, and there's probably too many of them. Like when I talk about making numbers awesome, if you go and play with the trade system because it's fully playable on the floor, you're probably going to say, "Hey, I thought he said the numbers were going to be awesome. This just seems like too much decisions or too low in numbers." And the truth is, you're probably right. Like, we're looking at that now and saying, eh, maybe we didn't quite get it right. All right, I'm going to pass it back to Kevin. So before we get directly into the talisman, I want to talk a little bit about charms from Diablo 2. So the charm system, if you're not familiar with it, was uh, a very simple cost-benefit thing, that there was these objects that would sit in your inventory. they take up some of your inventory space, but they would give you a, a wide variety of bonuses. So this was good. We, we liked the concept behind the system, and we liked the charms themselves. But what it led to was people keeping as many charms as they could and keeping a tiny bit of inventory space. Um, and we didn't think that that was a great choice to have to make. Uh, and you couldn't kill really resist taking the charms because they augmented your build so well. So, how have we solved this? The talisman, click, there we go, is a dedicated inventory for your charms.
I know. I, I feel the same way every time I put a charm in there instead of into my bag. So um, not only that, it gets bigger over time. It keeps all of the advantages of the Diablo 2 charm system. Um, you have more charms than you can fit in there, so you still have to choose, you know, pick and choose which ones you're going to have to augment your build. So uh, now that we had a better spot to put your charms and a, a much nicer spot to put your charms for your sake, uh, we wanted to work on the charms themselves. So how have charms evolved? Well, the bonuses for charms in Diablo 2 were very, very, incredibly varied. There was almost uh, no sort of bonus that they didn't have. And in Diablo 3, we're going to have them concentrate on your core attributes. So this is very much about customizing your build, about augmenting, you know, what weaknesses you have and, and or making your strengths better, etc. So um, the, the charms are going to be a core part of your build, so they're still very important. And there's a lot of different tiers of them in the game, so as you go forward, you're going to be playing with your charms a lot. As you choose new skills, you'll be choosing different charms to try to make up for the, the options that you chose. And that is the Talisman. My name is Julian Love, the lead technical artist on Diablo 3. And I'm going to talk to you about skill runes today. So we haven't talked about skill runes for quite a while. In fact, we kind of gave them a year off last year uh, to let them percolate a little bit. But they're back, and they're in the game, and you can play them here at the show. Uh, they're fully implemented in the Witch Doctor, the Wizard, and the Barbarian. And I, and I would urge you to just head on over at some point today and uh, play the game and give skill runes a try. So, um, here. just a quick update, um, getting up to speed with where we are with runes. Uh, if you remember, runes are a system for modifying your skills. They drop in the world like, uh, like gems do, but instead of putting them in your items to modify what your items do, you put these in your skills and modify what your skills do. So really, skill runes are a huge customization feature for your characters. And, and uh, usually when we think about character customization, people think about things like skin color or hairstyle or maybe gear. But really, the uh, skills that you pick for your character is, is a huge part of character customization. And I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, we have a, an Amazon here in the front row. Can I get you to stand up? All right. So let's give it up for the Amazon. It's a great costume. But you're not just any Amazon. You're a Spirazon, right? Or are you a Throazon? That looks like a Spirazon to me. Okay, great. So that's an example of what I'm talking about. She's not just an Amazon. We didn't just make sorceresses and barbarians. We made Spirazons. We made spe uh, Frenzy Barbs. We made Nova Sorceresses, things like that. So we're really going to blow the lid off of this idea with skill runes by providing a whole lot more builds. Now, how many more builds are we going to provide? Well, I kind of get curious about this. So uh, I enlisted the help of some programmers to help me out because I blow things up for a living. And they came back with this outrageous number. It's huge. I'm going to help you out with it. It's 96 billion. 886 million, blah, 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 roughly 97 million, billion builds per class. Okay, so that, that's a really big number. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around it. So let me kind of clarify exactly what we're talking about. Okay, so this is the number of skill combinations with runes that you can have uh, per class. This does not include things like traits, gear, dyes, uh, charms, anything like that. This is purely active skills, okay? So you're really going to be able to come up with just a ton of different kinds of class combinations. But it's not just about numbers. Skill runes are going to provide a whole lot more. And one of the key things to, to keep in mind here is that skill runes don't just change what a skill does.